Ray Novi, this Thursday, December 21st, our Crochet Interest Group will be having their second meeting right after school in room 160. Make sure to be there, Novi. It's going to be a very relaxing activity. Hey, Wildcats, just letting you know that the Novi Cubing Group, which is a group dedicated to solving Rubik's Cubes, will be having their first meeting this Friday in room 142. There will be an introductory meeting with hot chocolate. They would appreciate it if you want to attend. Novi Wrestling recently went against Howell and Salem on Wednesday, December 20th, with Novi beating Salem 45-27. to Great job, Wildcats. What's up, Novi? Today we'll be doing the last section of the My Career Quest IT. Production, games, and so much more. Let's get right into it. And there's a bunch of things going on here. We have cars, we have games, we have production for movies, all of these things that you all know and love. Let's get into it. Uh, I'm curious how someone gets into something like what you're doing while we're in this you know, whole job fair kind of thing. You know what? Um, I started as a contract guy. I made a couple videos for them that they liked and they moved me up. This is uh. Jesse Fiddler from Detroit PBS. What are, we, what are we looking at here? There's a lot of really nice equipment behind okay. this. Yeah, so this is an example of what it looks like when we go out into the field and get contact. So what kind of people are you looking for at this event in particular? Yeah, we're looking for anybody who's interested in television production. Um, we have everything from audio engineers, technicians, producers, anybody who has um, a passion for creating content. So we're AOE Esports. Uh, we're a local esports organization out of Troy, Michigan. Um, and we basically are looking to bring organized high school esports to the Southeast Michigan area. Okay, and how is this like something that could be a profession for some, would you say? Sure, so a lot of kids right now I don't think realize just how big esports is becoming. You know, they see it online, on Twitch, on YouTube, whatever. They see the pros, but they don't see a lot of what goes on around them. Um, so collegiate esports is growing. Uh, I'm actually a collegiate esports head coach myself at uh, Cleary in Howell. Um, and we bring in kids who are passionate about video games, passionate about esports, and they want to do stuff and have jobs in that field. And it's, it's growing. There's so much more than just playing the video games. There's all the marketing, advertising, the social media, the digital uh, online management, all that stuff that goes into it, uh, as well as the broadcasting, this, learning how to do this kind of stuff, uh, behind the scenes technical production. There are tons of job opportunities that are in the esports field that aren't necessarily just playing. And so we want to get kids you know, into the environment and, and show them what exists out there. So so what is this company and what is this for? What are we doing here? Okay, well this uh, the company is actually FAC, but we work for Oakland Police Academy. And at the Police Academy we have the... Uh, the Wait there, what's the driver? We have the advantage of having a driving simulator where we can replicate several different scenarios and teaching people to use good judgment and uh, decision making in their driving. So to a student that's maybe thinking about coming next year if this happens again, what's your message to them? I really would encourage as many students that have, you know, as many students as can should come because quite frankly this opens up the door to so many future opportunities and you just don't even know what... I, I talked to a student um, or a person here that knew that met a student last year, not from Novi, that ended up uh, getting an internship in the next summer and now they're working for the company and so you meet people, you network a little bit, you learn about something that you may not have known. Uh, I would highly recommend that any student get out to it. It's an awesome event. And there you have it, Novi. That concludes our last segment of the My Career Quest. We hope you enjoyed seeing all of these sections and maybe you have an interest in some of these things so you have a little more information on it. We'll see you later. What's up, Novi, and welcome to the final episode of College Game Day presented by the Cat's Eye News. As you can see, we have a very special guest to help us pick the four non-playoff semifinal games and then the three playoff semifinal games and our national championship predictions. Starting off with the Fiesta Bowl, Oregon against Liberty. Liberty finished with an undefeated season. Honestly, that should be enough to put them in the playoffs, but no, it's not. Give me Oregon 
I think they're going to win this one pretty big. Yeah, give me Oregon. Yeah, I think uh, obviously I'm, I'm going to take Oregon in this game. But what I will say is that Liberty is kind of an interesting team. They're they're not usually a, a team that plays a schedule that would warrant them being in the college football playoff. I will say that their offense is super unique, probably the most unique offense yeah. in the country if yeah. you've ever had a chance to kind of see that. But, you know, Bo Nix, Oregon, great team. Uh, definitely taking Oregon on this one. I agree. I don't think this one's going to be particularly close. Oregon winning our – being a great team in the Pac-12 is going to be too much for Liberty to handle. Liberty went undefeated this season and had a great year. But that being said, Oregon's offense is just too dynamic and they're just too deep. Give me Oregon in this one. The next game we have is Florida State versus Georgia in the Orange Bowl. Without Jordan Travis, they were not a top four team in the country. And Georgia, I still think, is a top four team in the country. So give me the Bulldogs in this one. Yeah, I know there's a lot of going to be a lot of emotion from Florida State, you know, feeling like they were snubbed from getting into the playoff. Um, no Jordan Travis is a real big problem for them. I just don't see them being able to overtake the Bulldogs. Bulldogs aren't as dominant as they used to be. Uh, maybe they're, they're traditional Georgia teams, but definitely going to take Georgia in this one. Yeah, we definitely got snubbed. Um, <laughs> it, it's just super disappointing to see the committee make the incredibly wrong decision. Um, doesn't matter if Florida State lost Jordan Travis. They still deserve to be in that top four team. Uh, give me Brock Glenn and the Seminoles to shove it up Boo Corrigan's and, uh, and give me the Seminoles on this one. Obviously, a lot of people question the decision to keep Florida State out of the playoff. With that being said, Georgia's third stringers are probably more talented than Florida State's starters. So give me Georgia big in this one. The next game we have is Ohio State versus Missouri in the Cotton Bowl. I think this is going to be a shape up to be a great game, but uh, Missouri's been rolling recently, and I don't know who's going to play from Ohio State. They're not playing Marvin Harrison Jr., which is obviously their best player. So I, I'm going to take the Tigers in this one. Yeah, I, uh, I think really interesting point on Marvin Harrison Jr., probably the most incredible player in the country. I do think that um, you know this is going to be a tight one without some of the key players for Ohio State. I think Missouri's got Missouri's got a shot. I'm going to take a flyer on Missouri as well. Yeah, like uh, Berlin and Mr. Micah just said, I uh, know Marvin Harrison's going to be big for the Buckeyes. Also, what's going to be big for the Buckeyes is their greatest quarterback in franchise history, Kyle McCord, is not playing in this game, <laughs> uh, which I don't think is going to make that big of a difference because he sucks, but give me Missouri in this one. I think we're going to show up. I'm also going to take Missouri in this one. Well, Devin Brown most likely getting the start for Ohio State. Probably no Marvin Harrison. Yeah, give me Missouri as well. The final non-college football playoff game we have is Penn State versus Ole Miss in the Peach Bowl. Really, I don't think Penn State had too much talent this year. But I th do think in the next coming years they will be very good, but it's just not this year. And an SEC opponent is never easy, so I'm going to take Ole Miss in this one. Yeah, I think uh, an SEC team is going to be tough to, to stack up against, but I also know that Penn State's played a tough schedule as well. I'd like to think that maybe good old Big Ten football, smash mouth football might do it. I think the defense of Penn State is fast, and, and I'm not sure Ole Miss has seen something like that, so I'm going to take Penn State in this one. This year just felt like another signature James Franklin year. Uh, overhyped and didn't really produced expectations uh, and it's not really complete without a big bowl loss. So give me Lane Kiffin and Jackson Dart to get their first signature bowl win. Penn State's running back duo of Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton is very good. Uh, Ole Miss also has uh, Judkins who's also good back so it's going to be some great running backs in this game but give me Penn State in this one. That will conclude our non-CFP games. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for our college football player predictions. See you later Nova. Do you have a story that you want featured on the Cat's Eye News? Email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com. Just send us details, pictures, and videos, and we'll do the rest.